Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Tibedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different properties of the DNA in the course molecular biology. So far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the, uh, the basic structures and basic properties of the nucleic acids. So what we have discussed, we have discussed about how the uh, nucleic acid is composed of the sugar base and the phosphate groups and uh, within the base you have the purines and the pyrimidines and the purine is always making a pair with pyrimidine whereas and they are always being present in a definite compositions the dna strands are running in anti parallel to each other so first strand if the first strand is running from the 5 prime to 3 prime the second strand is running from the 3 prime to 5 prime and uh, at the end we have also discussed how you can be able to isolate the uh, the uh, the nucleic acid from the or the genomic dna from the cell and in the uh, and at the end we have also discussed how you can be able to determine the concentration of the uh, isolated dna with the help of the absorbance at 260 nanometer or the uh, colorimetric estimation with the help of the diflamine reagents so in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about how you can be able to determine the quality of this DNA, right? So you can actually have the, uh, you have isolated the genomic DNA, right? Or you isolated a plasmid or you isolated any DNA, but how you will know that it is actually a high quality DNA, right? So if you want to do the quality assessment, you can actually have the, so quality of any biomolecule, whether it is DNA or protein or uh, or the RNA or other things. Quality lies in two aspects, right? Quality lies in one aspect that is the purity of the molecule. So how pure it is, right? And the quality of other molecule is what is the sequence, right? How how authentic it is, right? Suppose you isolated a DNA, then it, it is important that you should know that apart from DNA, what are the other things you have purified? while you are purifying from the uh, cell, right? So, because when you are purifying from the cell, you are you are subtracting or you are removing the other biomolecules, right? You are only isolating the DNA, but not the RNA, or you are not isolating the proteins along with it or lipids, right? So, purity analysis is actually going to tell you how pure your DNA, how much is the contamination of protein, what is the composition, uh, contamination of RNA, and what is the composition of lipid, right? These are the three major components which actually can contribute or which can actually uh, add up into the purity of DNA. Apart from that, you also want to know what is the sequence, what will be the sequence of this DNA, which you are actually going to sequence. So DNA sequence uh, is important because if you are purifying the human genome or if you are purifying the human genome, it should not be the case that you actually isolated something else, right? And that information only you will get when you are actually going to do the sequencing of this particular DNA, right? And that is very, very relevant when you are actually working with the, uh, you know, the uh, recombinant clones, right? For example, you generated a recombinant clones, then it is important that you verify that DNA with the help of the sequencing reactions. So first thing is how you can be able to determine the purity of the DNA, right? So the purity of the DNA can be determined uh, by spectrophotic method, method. So you can, you know that the DNA and RNA absorbs at 260 nanometer, whereas the protein absorbs at 280 nanometer. But if you see the curve, right? Uh, so if you see the curve, if you, what you will see here is that at 260, the DNA and RNA are going to absorb but they also absorb at 280 nanometer, right? So this is for uh, DNA and RNA. Whereas for the uh, for the proteins, it is actually going to be like this. So this is for the protein, right? Now what you see here is that this is showing a lambda max for the nucleic acid, right, for the nucleic acid, whereas this is the lambda max for the protein. But it does not mean that the protein is not uh, contaminating or not, you know, having any absorbent at 260 nanometer. And that's why it is important that we should calculate 
a ratio of 262 to 80 ratio. So what you can do is you take the absorbance not only at 260 nanometer but at 280 nanometer. And that is actually going to tell you the purity of your sample. For example, if you calculate the 262 to 80 ratio and if it comes at 1.8, right, then it is a pure DNA, right. If 262 to 80 ratio is less than 1.8, then there will be a contamination of the protein, which means this component is now increasing and this component remains the same. Right? This means it is actually going to, the ratio will actually going to lower down, right? This means, see, the what will be the, if it is a 50-50 contribution, right? Then the ratio is going to be 1, right? Because then the absorbent at 260 and 280 are actually going to be equal, right? So that time the contamination would be 50%. But if it is less than 1.8, then the there will be a contamination of protein. Now, if 260 to 80-80 ratio is more than 2, right, which means you are actually going to have very high absorbance at 260 nanometer, that means there will be a contamination of RNA into the DNA prep. Now, this is very important to understand. You know that the DNA is double standard, which means you have two strands and the bases are inside. So, whereas the RNA is mostly being single stranded, right? Which means this is the RNA with the basis. Now, if you see the very carefully, the bases within the DNA are being protected within the DNA structure, right? And because they are not exposed to the outer environment, because one base is, you know, put next to the each other, they are actually going to show the lesser quantum yield and lesser uh, excitation to the light, okay. And because of that, they are actually going to show you the lower absorbance compared to the RNA molecule because the RNA, the, uh, the bases are exposed to the water and exposed to the outer environment and because of that, they will actually going to make the absorbance more, right? And because of that, the RNA is actually going to show you the more absorbance compared to the DNA. So even if the DNA is pure and if there is a RNA contamination, the RNA is actually going to show you the 260 reading more. So if the 260 reading is more and 280 is same or if, uh, equal, then the ratio will actually above 2, right? And that's how it is actually going to give you the indication that there is a contamination of RNA species. Now, this is all about the DNA purity, right? Now, the second point is about the sequencing. So, DNA sequencing, right? So, DNA sequencing, historically, there are two methods of DNA sequencing with a similar principle of breaking the DNA into the small fragment followed by the separation and analyze them on a high resolution electrophysics gel. So, if you want to sequence any biomolecule, you are supposed to do this, right? So, for example, if this is the DNA, what we want to sequence, what we can do is we can just split this into a small, 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 small fraction, right? And then we can actually be able to sequence. So, it is actually the, you know, same rule as divide, right, and sequence. Because it is easy to, you know, then manage these small fragments. You cannot actually you know, manage a 3 kb DNA, but you can easily manage 100 base pair DNA because then it is easy to manage, right? So, what you can do is you amplify this particular sequence with a modified base. So, when you modif when you amplify this with a modified base, wherever you are actually going to have the modified base, it is actually going to break, right? And that's how it is actually going to give you the small fragment and you know where it is actually going to break. For example, if I take the modified base for A, it is going to break here, it is going to break, uh, yeah. And if I take the modified base like G, then it is going to break here, it is going to break here and something like that. And then I can analyze these uh, sizes of the DNA on a uh, high, high resolution electrophoresis gel and that's how it is actually going to give me the 
complete sequence. And if you follow this method where you are going to use the modified base, then this sequencing method is called as Sanger sequencing method. And for this sequencing method, the Sanger got the Nobel Prize. Okay. The other option is that you use the chemical reagents, right? You use the chemical reagents which are actually going to attack the bases. So you can have the reaction for A, you can have the reaction for T, you can have the reaction for G, you can have the reaction for C. So what will happen is it is going to break after A, T, G, C like that. And that's how you can actually be able to separate these fragments and that's how you are actually going to get the information about the sequencing. And if you use that method, then it is actually going to be called as maxim Gilbert method. So let's first discuss the Sanger sequencing method and then we are actually going to discuss about the maxim Gilbert method. So the dideoxy chain termination method or the Sanger's method. This method is originally been developed by the Frederick Sanger in the year of 1977. In this method, a single standard DNA is used as a template to synthesize the complementary copy with the help of a polymerase in the presence of tin nucleotides. The polymerization reaction contains a primer and the nucleotides, three normal nucleotide and a two prime, three prime dideoxy nucleotide triphosphate which is a modified nucleotides. When the DNA polymerase utilizes the DDNTPs as nucleotide, it gets incorporated into the growing chain, but chain elongation stop at the dideoxy as, as the dideoxy due to the absence of 3' hydroxyl group. In the typical sequencing reaction, you are going to run the four different DDNTPs are taken into the four separate reaction and analyzed on the high resolution polyacrylamide gels. The ratio of NTPs and DNTPs is adjusted so that the chain termination occurs at each position of the bases in the template. So when you do the dideoxy chain termination method, you can actually have this, right? So this, for example, this is the region which you want to sequence, right? So you are actually going to have the primer. So in the step one, a primer is added and annealed to the three prime of the DNA helix, right, in a template. In the step two, the radio labeled ATP is used to label the primer. So you are actually going to label the primer so that you know what will be the fragment. So you can actually be able to identify this fragment onto the autoradiograms. Then the step three, the polymerase reaction is divided into the four reactions. So you can have the four reactions. You can have the A reaction, you can have G reaction, you can have C reaction and you can have T reactions. So in the A reaction, what you have? You have the ADD ATP actually, so dideoxy ATP. In the G reaction, you are going to have DD GTP. In the C reactions, you are going to have DD CTP, right? And in the T reactions, you are going to have DD TTP, right? This is what it is showing here. So you can have the A reactions, you can have the T reactions, you can have G reactions, you can have C reactions and all the four reactions you are actually going to be load onto the sequencing gel and then you are actually going to analyze them with the help of the red autoradiogram. So in the step four the DNA synthesis continue until the terminated by the incorporation of the specific dideoxy nucleotides right because the dideoxy nucleotide does not contain three prime hydroxyl group so it will actually going to terminate the chain elongations. Then you are going to a chase of the polymerization reaction is performed in the presence of high concentration of NTPs to extend the all non-terminated sequence into the high molecular weight DNA. This high molecular weight sequence will not enter into the sequencing gel. So because the pore size what you are going to adjust in of the sequencing gel in such a way that this high molecular weight DNA is not going to enter because this high molecular weight DNA will not going to provide you any information about the terminations and they are actually going to make the analysis more complex. So after this, you are going to have the four reactions. You can have the A reactions, you can have T reactions, you can have G reactions, then you can have C reactions. So the way it goes that you are actually going to have the A reactions, right? Then you can actually have the T reactions. So from the A, you are actually going to have the T, right? 
and from the T you are going to have the T. So you are actually going to read from the from the bottom. Okay. So for example, you are going to have A T T A G. Then you are going to have A, right? Then you are going to have C. Then you are going to like that. So if you go like this, right? You go like this. Then you are going like this. Then you go like this. So you have to read. In the reverse direction. So the smallest one you are going to put first. Second last you are going to do like this. Third one like this. Fourth one, fifth one, sixth one, seventh one, eighth one like that. Like you have to go from the bottom, and you have to keep reading and keep putting the sequences like this. And ultimately you are going to get the sequence of the DNA. Now let's talk about the Maxim Gilbert method. So the Maxim Gilbert method actually relies on the on the chemistry part, right? So it is actually going to utilize the different types of reagents which are actually going to be base specific. So you can have the A reaction, G reaction, C reaction, T reaction, and so on. And that's how it is actually going to do the same thing. What we are doing, what the Sanger has done with the help of the enzyme. But here you are actually using the different types of chemical reagents. So this method was discovered by the Maxim and Gilbert in the year of 1977, which is based on the chemical modification and the subsequent cleavage. In this method, a 3' prime or 5' prime radionucleotide DNA is treated with a base specific chemical, which randomly cleave the DNA at their specific target nucleotide. These fragments are analyzed on a high resolution polyclamide gel and the autoradiogram is developed. The fragment with the terminal radio label appear as a band in the gel. So the chemical reaction what are going to be performed in two steps. First, you are going to have the base specific reaction and the second step you are going to have the cleavage reaction. So the base specific reactions, first you are going to have the base specific reaction. So different base specific reactions are used to modify the target nucleotide. So reaction one, you are going to have the dimethyl sulfate or DMS, which is actually going to modify the N7 of the guanine and then open the ring between C8 and C9. This is going to be called as G reactions. Then in the reaction two, you are going to use the formic acid and act on the purine nucleotide. So it is actually going to act on G and A by attacking onto the glycosidic bond. Then you have a reaction three, which is going where you are going to have the hydrazine and which is actually going to break the rings of the pyrimidines. So it is actually going to be not specific for a particular base, but it's also going, it's only going to be specific for pyrimidines. So it's going to be called as T plus C reactions. Then you're going to have reaction four, whereas in the presence of salt, it breaks the ring of the cytosine. So it's going to call as C reaction. So basically you're going to have four reactions. One is called G reaction. Other one is called as A plus G reactions. You're going to have C plus T reactions and you're going to have the C reactions. So you're going to take the radio label DNA. You're going to add these reagents. And that's how you're going to have the G reactions, A plus G reactions, C plus T reaction, and C reactions. And then you are going to have the cleavage reactions. So after the base reactions, pipidine is added, which will replace the modified bases and catalyze the cleavage of phosphodiester bond next to the modified nucleus. So once you're done the reaction, after the G, after the G, after G and C, after C, it is going to be cleaved. And that's how you're going to have the fragments. So the fragment, so you're going to have the G reactions, G plus A reactions, C plus T, T reaction and C reactions. So imagine that if this is the DNA sequence which you want to sequence. And here also exactly the same way. It, you have to go in the reverse direction. But remember that when you have the bond band, band between G and G plus A, then it is actually going to read as G. Okay, so it is, for example, here you have the two bands. One is in the G reaction, the other one is in the G plus A reaction. So it is not going to be read as A, it is actually going to be read as G. So from here, this is going to be read as G. Then you have this, so you actually will go in the reverse direction. 
So the fragment in J ln is read as G, whereas the fragment in the G plus A, but absent in G is read as A. Similarly, fragment in C is read as C, whereas the fragment present in T plus C, but absent in C is read as T. Okay. Same is true for this C. Okay. If the two fragments are present in uh, same distance, right, of same size, then it is actually going to read as C rather than T actually. But if the fragment is absent in C, but it is present in T, then it is actually going to read as T. For example, this one. So this one, the fragment is absent in G, but it is present in G plus A. So this is actually going to be read as A. Same is true here. For example, this is the T plus C. So this is actually going to be read as T. And that's how it view, if you go from the reverse direction, you are actually going to be deduced the sequence at the end and that is what it is actually going to be the sequence of that particular DNA. So you what the way you are going to read this sequence is that you are actually going to read the lowest band and then you are actually going to go to the higher bands. So this is all about the assessment of the DNA quality right. So what we have discussed, we have discussed about the purity of the DNA and we have also discussed about the DNA sequencing. While we were discussing about the purity of DNA, we took the help of the spectrophotometer and when we were discussing about the DNA sequencing, we discussed about the Sanger's method and we have also discussed about the Maxim Gilbert method. So with this, I would like to conclude my lecture here. Our subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss some more aspects related to the biomolecules which are relevant for the molecular biology. Thank you. Mm -hmm.